Hi, this is your host, Swapnil Bharti, and welcome to TFR Insight, a show where we talk, we deep dive into cloud native AI, ML, security, and open source technologies. And today we have with us, once again, Mike Katrani, Solutions Engineer at Linode. Today, uh, we are going to talk about the storage aspect of cloud years, networking and compute. So Mike, if I ask you, if you look at uh, the storage options that are there for of course, hyperscale pro providers like AWS and uh, Linode. What types of storage um, capacities are available for uh, Linode users? And why does it matter for businesses to select the right kind of storage? Can you talk about that? Yeah, sure. There's typically three types of storage that you'll find in the cloud, file-based storage, object storage, and block storage. File-based storage is what everybody is most familiar with. You can kind of think of it as a filing cabinet with separate folders or directories. You access a folder and the information is there. People are going to be most familiar with this type of storage because it's you know what you commonly find on every computer system. Now, in this day and age, there's two other common types of storage that we see in the cloud, block storage and object storage. Each of, each of them have their own use cases. Uh, block storage is something that you can, it's network attached storage that you can use to mount to different machines. It's, used, it's tightly coupled with our Kubernetes environment. And then object storage is great for storing unstructured data in the cloud that can be accessed via an HTTP interface. Can you also talk about the importance of uh, object storage? Why should businesses be using object storage? What are the benefits there? Yeah, so object storage is massively scalable, durable, and it's cheap. Um, we built our object storage on top of what's known as the S3 API. Amazon developed the S3 API initially, um, which is a REST-based interface where you can access objects in the cloud. Um, this means you have a common interface across multiple cloud providers um, where you can store any kind of data you want um, in an unstructured environment and retrieve that data from any cloud um, for any application and has a wide variety of use cases um, for modern business solutions. Where did the idea of object storage at all started? Actually, object storage um, started with Amazon. Uh, they, um, you know, uh, they kind of built the standard for the S3 API, uh, and it was a way to decouple your storage needs from your compute infrastructure. Um, so they really started this whole thing. Um, and then, uh, so open source technologies were developed like Ceph. Um, it was highly adopted. Um, through a wide variety of industries, and, and today it's the de facto standard um, as far as object storage is concerned. You said you know that it's kind of started at AWS, um, but if you look at Linode, what kind of makes Linode's approach to uh, object storage compatible with the rest of the market so that users can very easily move uh, between different clouds? Yeah, so um, like I said, there's a common standard uh, called the S3 API. Um, that is used for accessing these objects uh, across the cloud. Linode has always been committed to building services on top of open source technologies. Um, so we took what was in the industry and we built a network attached storage system um, and we made that completely compatible with the S3 API. That means um, if you have a configuration that you're using at another cloud provider and it uses that S3 API, since it's an agnostic set of standards, you can change your keys and start using Linode Cloud immediately. Um, so if you have a hybrid cloud strategy, you don't have to change any of your programming to get data into Linode's cloud. Let's talk about the scenarios uh, or use cases that are perfect for object storage that will help us understand better. Yeah, so um, one of the biggest things I would like to highlight um, is backups, to be honest with you. Backups should be an integral part of any production cloud strategy. Um, you don't want to be caught holding the ball if your production systems go down and you need to restore them to a previous state. Um, so previously, the choices were to use your direct attached storage, which increases your costs um, in your overall compute infrastructure, um, to use block storage, um, you know, which is another option. But object storage is probably the best place that you can store backups in the cloud. It gives you an interface that you can use um, with any of your compute infrastructure. It does not have to be directly attached to your compute in infrastructure because you're talking over the HTTP protocol to store that data, which means you can take you know, very granular snapshots of all of your systems um, and just put them in an object storage uh, 
storage medium there. So, um, you know, our buddies over at Stark and Wayne, I know you're familiar with James Hunt over there, have built something called Shield Cloud. And I think this really, you know, is the perfect kind of use case uh, for object storage in the cloud. And what that does is it's a very intelligent interface that allows you to back up your production systems like databases, Postgres. It's very intelligent about the kinds of systems that you're running. It will take those systems and it allows you to do very granular backups where you send backups of those systems into object storage. This gives you a greatly scalable, very durable, very cost efficient way of being able to store your backups in the cloud. And not only that, but since object storage is built upon the S3 API, again, a compatible interface, you can take backups from other clouds and store them in Linode's cloud. You can take backups from DigitalOcean or AWS and use Shield Cloud to store that in Linode's object storage interface, which strengthen, strengthens your, your multi-cloud strategy. Another large use case I'd like to highlight with object storage is the ability to store static assets in the cloud. Um, if you have assets that you aren't accessing regularly, object storage is the perfect storage medium for you. Again, highly durable. It's going to be very cost effective, um, and it's going to allow you to store objects in a way that they can be accessed from any interface over HTTP at any time. Um, so you have many people these days that instead of running a classic website uh, where you have to have uh, you know a server-side programming language in conjunction with your your front-end UI, you can actually just develop static assets in HTML and CSS and serve them you know out of an object storage interface, which pretty much you know makes your compute cost come down close to zero. Mike, thank you so much for uh, talking about storage today. And also, uh, it's really important to understand the reasons why businesses should choose this kind of storage. Uh, thanks for sharing your insights, and I look forward to talk to you again. Maybe we can do it again in, the, in person as we did at KubeCon, but if not, we'll continue to do that over Zoom. Thank you. It seems like such a long time ago. It was a pleasure speaking with you today, Swap.